Thank you very much. I won't say it's a great pleasure to be here today, which is usually how I start off addressing groups, because it's not. Never mind the heat, but it's not a pleasure to have to be here and to have to say, let's restore what we always thought we had. Let's restore what we always knew. Let's, let's restore American liberty. This country, for all its flaws, has always been a beacon of liberty. We pioneered liberty. We pioneered liberty under law. And yet, we have always had a number of flaws. We've always had a number of besmirches on our record. In most of our wars historically, not all of them, but in most of our wars, we have taken actions in the name of national security that trampled upon liberty. In every single one, and the record goes from the, from the Alien and Sedition Acts during the Quasi War with France in 1798 to the suspension of habeas corpus temporarily during the Civil War to the Espionage Act of 1917, the Palmer Raids of 1919, the Smith Act of 1940, the, the uh, detention of Japanese American citizens in internment camps during World War II, the depredations of the McCarthy era in the early days of the Cold War, the FBI's COINTELPRO operations against anti-Vietnam War protesters. We have done things that have trampled liberty in the name of national security. They all have one thing in common. They all have one thing in common. The historians unanimously write 30 years later, they didn't help national security, but they did trample liberty. Usually, usually, usually we end up apologizing for them about 30 years later. In 1988, Congress passed a bill for reparations to Japanese Americans interned during World War II. We are following in that tradition now, unfortunately. During this so-called war on terrorism, we have now abolished habeas corpus. Imagine that, abolished habeas corpus. And we've done far worse. We've done more than that. This president, this president claims the power to point his finger at anybody and say, you are an enemy combatant because I say so. And because I say so, we are going to throw you in jail forever with no hearing, no confrontation with witnesses, no presentation of witnesses, no due process of any kind. We're going to throw you in jail forever. No executive authority, no executive in an English-speaking country has claimed such tyrannical power since before Magna Carta was passed 800 years ago. Magna Carta. Magna Carta established the right of habeas corpus. And for those of you who, like me, for some unaccountable reason, spent a few years taking high school Latin, you know that habeas corpus means habeas corpus. Bring the body, Sir King. Bring the body, bring the prisoner in front of a neutral magistrate and show some evidence as to why this person under law should be deprived of liberty should be held. You, the king, do not have the authority to hold a person except upon probable cause of a crime proved in front of a neutral magistrate. That was habeas corpus. That was binding on the king of England. It should be binding on the president of the United States. If you read, if you read the Declaration of Independence, and nobody does, we all know the first couple of paragraphs. We hold these truths to be self-evident and so forth. But if you actually read the Declaration of Independence, most of it is a laundry list of complaints against the king of such egregious, terrible invasions of liberty, acts of tyranny that the king had committed as to justify violent revolution and violent rebellion and break away from the British crown. One of those actions quoted in the Declaration of Independence, one of those dastardly actions justifying violent revolution in the mind of Thomas Jefferson. He has conspired with others, namely Parliament, we don't want to name them. He has conspired with others 
to deprive us of the benefits of trial by jury, unquote. We have gone, this, President Bush has gone one better. We are now depriving people of the rights of trial, period, by jury or otherwise. We rebelled against George III for far less than this, and George V should profit from his example. We must, we must, if anyone had told me, at anyone, if anyone had told me at any time since I first studied civics in seventh grade that one day I would be in Congress, and while I was in Congress, I would have occasion to introduce a bill titled the Habeas Corpus Restoration Act, I would have said, you're crazy. We've had it for 800 years. We don't have to restore it. But we do. There is nothing more important in this country today, nothing, than to restore habeas corpus. Nothing more important than to restore American liberty. Nothing more important. Nothing more important than to reestablish the principle that nobody, no president, no Congress, no king, no emperor, nobody can hold people in jail and deprive them of liberty without due process of law. That's what this country... This country, this country, in one respect, is unique among countries on the earth. It was not founded as a collection of racially or ethnically homogeneous people. It was founded in an idea, and the idea was liberty, liberty under law. And that idea is now under challenge as it has never been challenged before. We must vindicate it. We must restore liberty under law. We must restore habeas corpus. And we must kick out these ignoramuses who have no idea what liberty is all about. Thank you very much.